Hello and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Closing Deals and Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges. And baby girl, this is a brand new year, which means new opportunity, which means you get to step into who you want to become. Now, I know a lot of us might be having some New Year's resolutions, new goals, new expectations of ourselves, And I just wanted to give you a new perspective. Because sometimes it's not about the goal, but it's about the woman that you become in the process. Let that set in because sometimes we feel like we really haven't gotten that far. Last year at this time, one year ago from today, was your life a little bit different than it is right now? And can you just take a minute to acknowledge yourself for maybe the growth that you've had this year? Something uncomfortable that you were willing to put yourself through? Your ability to change, to grow, something that you're really grateful for yourself for, really proud of yourself for, let's just take a minute and acknowledge ourselves because sometimes we're so focused on where we are not or who we are not with or what we do not have that we get so lost on our progress and who we're developing into at the same time. I think that this is such a beautiful place for women to come to. And if you're a woman listening to this right now and you are in sales, regardless of what industry you're in, whether that's B2B, B2C, door-to-door, B2G, you are in a really amazing opportunity in your life because you literally have all the power with inside of you to change the amount of money that you're bringing into your family, the amount of ability that you have to help other people, and the amount of safety that you can create for yourself if you want to. And if you're not in sales, and this is kind of curious, then Um, Allow yourself to step into what it would might look like for this next year if you wanted to maybe drift into sales a little bit and kind of see what it would be like for yourself. Um, I talk a lot about sales and I think that it's really important to understand that as a woman, we have to navigate this process a little bit differently than guys. And unfortunately, there's not until now a lot of sales training that's specifically designed for women so that you can acquire the skills that are necessary in order to reach a level of income that some people only dream about. Some people only daydream about. Some people only wish that they can have. And sales and having the ability to make money can literally change the trajectory of your life just like it did mine. So I wanted to give you for this brand new year, a couple of tools to put in your tool belt. Um, Also, I wanted you to realize that you have everything, literally everything inside of you to make this year absolutely phenomenal if you wanted to and give you freaking permission to become the woman that you want to be so that one year from now, if you have the ability to look back, you're way more prouder of the woman that you are this year compared to the last because you're willing to get uncomfortable to become who you deserve to be. So let's jump straight in. Brand new year. What should we do to enhance our sales ability? Now with sales, especially being a woman in sales, there is a triad of success. Okay. So imagine a triangle and imagine three different sides. Now for women, this is way more important than just like to a guy because men are wired differently than women. So they're going to have different priorities when it comes to being really successful in sales. Um, The first aspect of our triangle is a skill set, which is extremely important right? If I just wish that I'm really, really great at sales and I go out there and I knock a lot of doors or call a lot of people and my skills suck, um, baby girl, you're going to want to (laughs) quit. Okay. Like you're going to feel really frustrated, overwhelmed. It's going to feel like you're literally throwing mud up against the wall, hoping and praying that something sticks and you're going to resent being in sales. You're going to feel really, really frustrated and you're not going to want to do it. And then you're going to be at a loss of like where you should do in your life and it's just not worth it. Now, caveat to that guys, you know, really can focus on the skill and they can go out there and take action and do what they got to do without having to focus on mindset. And mindset is number two, the second part of the triad for women. Let me explain. Let me explain. (laughs) So back a long time ago and like the old and Buffalo days, I want you to imagine that there's a guy and his name is Robbie. I'm just coming up with a random name. Robbie is going out with his fellas that morning to go hunt buffalo for the tribe to bring back home food for the family. OK, 
Okay. And they're out there. It's early in the morning. There's like dew on the plants, right? And they're being really quiet. They're hunting down. And all of a sudden they see the buffalo coming. They're like getting ready to go fight, to run after these buffalo. And Robbie looks at his friend, Sean, and is like, Sean, I don't think I can fight buffalo today. I don't think I can hunt. And Sean's like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, we're about to hunt. We had to beat the tribe. What are you talking about? And he goes, well, you know, Susie hasn't looked at me in a, all day. And she hasn't touched me in a week. And she hasn't picked up little Robbie Jr. And I just think so. It's wrong. I don't think I can. I don't think I can perform today. <laughs> that would be absolutely r ridiculous because men are wired to hunt. They are wired to produce. They are wired to perform. Men produce testosterone every two hours. They have the energy like they, that's what they're naturally wired to do. So they don't have to pump themselves up beforehand. I'm the man. I can do this. I can hunt the buffalo. I see the buffalo. I'm going to hunt. Like they don't have to do that as much as a woman would because we are wired very differently, which is why in the triad of success for women in sales, you have to have in addition to sales skills, a good mindset and tools to help you get through your shit. Exactly like we are wired in a different way. It's good to take a look at this. We are wired naturally to be nurturing. Unlike men that produce testosterone every two hours, it takes us about two days to produce the same amount of testosterone. And so as a woman, if you're confused why you can't next to the sales guy next to you on the team, run at the same pace or work the same amount of hours or call the same amount of people and you're getting frustrated with yourself, like, what about giving yourself a little grace and realize that you are not wired the same way. You're going to have to do things a little bit differently and you're going to have to have some tools to help you mindset wise, because when shit hits the fan, your boyfriend breaks up with you. Um, something happens with your kid's school. Some, one of your kids are sick, um, or something happens in your family, like emotionally something goes wrong. One of your best friends stabs you in the back. All of a sudden it's like work and life and the world freaking stops because we are emotionally wrecked. We are emotionally wired. Our priority list is different than men. We think about everything at the same time. Men work on a priority list, right? That's why they, they think, Hey, I have to get this done. And this is who I have to talk to. And like nothing else matters, but that if they are hungry, they go eat, they go into the kitchen, they open up the pantry, they go grab some food. Even if you're cooking them dinner and you're like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? He's so rude. No, like he is wired to go on a priority list. He's hungry. He eats women. We think about things at the same time, multiple different things are happening at once. And so we have to stop comparing ourselves to men and instead give ourselves new tools so that we can be really successful as a woman and not as a guy in sales. So what happens when things don't go our way? What happens when we are emotionally wrecked or something horrible goes on? We need to be able to give ourselves tools so that we can work through it to where we can actually start focusing on the things that matter, right? Which is taking care of our family, especially for my single mamas out there, that it relies on your shoulders to make it happen. I know what it's like. I've been a single mom for 11 years and I know what it's like to be calling 220 people a day, have a bunch of guys in my office telling me you got to toughen up. Like it's just call one more person. Like you got to go and money's coming into my bank account. And I hate going to work every day and feeling like so out of alignment with sales and feeling like, why am I doing this? I'm re pretending to be somebody that I'm not. I'm using tools and tactics that don't align with who I am. And I feel so gross and then I feel this beautiful thing called mom guilt. And I'm like, well, if I don't do this, then I'm not gonna be able to take care of my daughter. So I completely get it. I completely get it. And the thing is, is that I was trying to be a guy. So I'm trying to save you right now with understanding that you are gonna have to do your schedule a little bit differently and prioritize things a little bit differently than men so that you can get the same and even better results. What if it wasn't a quantity game and it was a quality game? You can't pay attention to go call the people that you need to call, make the meetings that you need to make, follow up with the people if your mind is racing 100 million miles an hour about your kid or about some guy you like. How the hell are you going to be able to perform at your absolute best if your mind is going absolutely crazy? And I understand this completely because I do the same thing. And the thing is, is that I can allow myself to go into a mind crazy nonsense and my brain can go spiraling 
the tool and the trick is how do I get myself out of the state as fast as possible? I recently went to Tony Robbins date with destiny and I accrued on Tony Robbins team for three years. I'd never gone to date with destiny before. It was absolutely incredible. There was one thing that he said that really stood out to me. He's like, I am Tony Robbins, not because I chose and like woke up one day and was Tony Robbins. I've conditioned myself to be this way. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. How do you condition yourself to be a certain way? And I think that we are super wired um, all by the same things. And, and we're driven by different needs in addition to, and different emotional needs. And if we have the self-awareness for ourselves, we can kind of give ourselves the medicine that we need. That makes sense. And one thing that I've done over the years is what Tony calls like his incantations, right? Where he really um, conditions his mind kind of like affirmations, but he does it while he's running or he does it really passionately. So it ingrains in his body. And one thing that I used to say over and over and over again was exactly what he did was, um, I now command my subconscious mind to directing me to helping as many people as possible alive today by giving me the strength, the passion, the emotion, the persuasion, whatever it takes to get these people to change their lives now. And I would say the one about like money and God's wealth is circulating in my life. His wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, goals, and desires are met instantaneously by infinite intelligence for I'm one with God and God is everything. And I came up with different ones for me for different areas of my life. I came up with one to help me with sales because I stuttered really bad at the time when I first started sales. I was so awkward. And like in my incantation, I was like, I am the best. I am the number one in sales wherever I go because that is what I choose. I step up, step up, step up, right? And like I would say all these different things. When I speak, I speak clearly and directly with absolute purpose and certainty for I am the absolute best choice. I had one for my relationship that I wanted in my life and one for procrastination because I was always procrastinating, always showing up late on, hey, I, I am the best. I show up on time. I don't procrastinate. I'm efficient with my time. I'm clear. I'm purposeful. And I would come up with these different things for an area in my life that I was struggling with. And I did this with my clients the other day and we talked about one area where we are emotionally getting distraught. So if you have the ability, if you're not driving or anything, take out a piece of paper and just write down the top emotions that you feel in a week. Maybe it's worry, anxiety, um, overwhelm, happy, grateful, silly, um, passionate, you know, and just give yourself a minute to write down these emotions that are coming up for you. As women, we're a lot different than men. We are differently wired. So it's a good, uh, trick and a good tool to have in your tool belt to actually know what's coming up for you. Let's just take a big step back. What comes up for you during the day? Exhausted, burnt out, frustrated, overwhelmed, whatever it is. And I just want you to pick out like the top three negative emotions that are coming up for you. Just the top three. And secondly, <clears throat> what causes that? So when does this show up? It does it show up midday when you haven't made a sale yet. And you're like, man, like I feel like a failure. I'm working so hard. I've talked to somebody. Everyone keeps telling me, no, I feel rejected. Like if I don't close this sale, by the end of the week, I'm not going to hit KPI. What if I get fired? If I get fired, what happens to my kid? What happens to my kid if I get fired? And then I have to do something again. I have to go back to a different type of job. I'm not going to be around them. And oh my God, that means I'm a horrible mom. That means this, that means that. And we have all these freaking meanings for what could possibly be happening. We go down this spiral of worry. <laughs> Are you with me? Does this ever happen to you? This happens to me all the time. I think like 25 steps in the future of like what could happen. It's horrible. So in this moment, if this is a pattern, right? If this happens more than once, guess who's the common denominator? It's you. And if you don't do anything about this, it's going to continue to happen. Now, do you want to settle for this continuing to happen if you didn't have to though? Do you want to change this if you could? Because it takes you deciding to love yourself enough to not have yourself be in a suffering state all the time. It also requires you knowledge of how to do it. And it requires you having the ability to get super freaking uncomfortable 
to do something that you don't want to do to break the pattern. You with me? Right? So <clears throat> let's do this. Let's come up with a way for us to get out of our own head and give ourselves a new incantation or a new affirmation that would really serve us and support us moving forward. So let's say just for this example, we're going to continue it. Let's say that we're in the middle of the day and this keeps happening where we emotionally shut down towards the end of the day. We haven't made sales or whatever the heck is happening and we start spiraling. Maybe our new incantation with ourself is I now command my subconscious mind to stand in faith and possibility. Clients are looking for me as I speak. I serve at the highest ability that I possibly can and people want to pay me what this cost if not even more, right? Like maybe that's it. Or maybe like I now command my subconscious mind to understand that I am the absolute best choice that someone can have. When I speak, I speak clearly and directly. I provide value and I'm always caring about the people in front of me and they realize that. And now writing this out is not just like what's going to do it. It's really not. So what we do is I want you to take out your statement. I like, I now command my subconscious mind because it's commanding it of me to <laughs> trust. I love that to trust, to step into faith. And sometimes we, we don't trust and we start calculating everything versus just allowing ourselves to release it. Hey, like I trust that everything's working the way that it gets to, and I will continue to get better every single day while people are looking for me. Maybe that's it. So we're going to write it down. And the next thing that we're going to do is that we are going to say this over and over and over again while we're walking or we can go on a run out loud to ourselves over and over and over again until we feel it ingrained in our body, right? So walk around and say your statement 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 times, however long it takes for it to feel really ingrained in your body. And you do that and then you put it up somewhere. And again, we're only doing one thing at a time. There's probably a lot of stuff that's messed up in your life right now. And that's okay. It's called being human. We're just trying to fix one thing that's not serving you. <laughs> okay. And so let's say the next day you are frustrated in the middle of the day and you're like, oh yeah, my statement. So you go and you grab your statement and go walk outside five minutes saying it over and over and over and over again, regrained because you're moving your body, right? And Tony Robbins talks about this. The, his triad where focus goes, energy flows, right? If you get in your head, you're dead. So we get in our mind and we don't focus on the right things that we should be focused on. So if your mind is going to worry, frustration, um, being scared, all of a sudden, like everything around you doesn't matter because you are in a really negative state, right? And guys are a little bit easier with turning this off when they know the priority is to work, now, women, we don't work on a priority list like guys. So we can't turn it off as well. So we have to use these tools. So let's say the next day you're in this moment, you pick up your statement, you go and you talk, you're moving your body, the physiology, your language is really important. His triad is focus, language, and, um, and physiology. So you're moving your body, you're focusing on what you want, and you're using the language to support you. And what you'll notice at the end so that you don't feel worried, anxiety, or whatever your bad emotional word is. And you do this over and over and over again until you stop worrying about that thing or you start frustrating about that thing or you start freaking out about that thing. And now you've ingrained a new thought pattern into your brain. And this is just one tool out of millions of different tools that you can use, but I wanted to give you something that you can use or you don't have to use. Typically the things that are really amazing and that will change your life are really simple. And what's easy to do is easy not to do. That's Jim Rohn. And so you have the ability right now with the tool that I just gave you to utilize it, to help you with a thought pattern that's not serving you, or you don't have to do anything and you can stay the same and you can still feel frustrated or annoyed or whatever. And it can still affect you a year, two years, three years from now, or you can do something to actually change it. So let's talk about the third aspect of the triad of success for women in sales, which is action. And I know that sounds super simple, but again, the thing is <laughs> success is supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be hard. It's just the little things that you do to get you closer to who you want to become. 
And you can't have one without the other for women in sales, right? With a great mindset and a lot of action, calling a bunch of people, I believe I can make a sale. I believe I can make a sale. I see the sale. I see it without sales skills, without knowing what to say on the call. If somebody gives you an objection and you don't know how to overcome it, if you trigger resistance in a call, like that sale is not being made because of your lack and your ability of obtaining the skills necessary in order for you to be excellent at your craft. Now, let's say you have all these sales skills and you're taking a bunch of action, but you don't believe in yourself as a woman. It's very, very difficult because you will burn out. You will shut down. You'll become cold, right? Taking a bunch of action, have a bunch of sales skills. I'm not happy. I don't believe in myself. Things are going horrible at home. Uh, you shut down and people can feel it. Or let's say you really believe in yourself and you are having a great mindset. You're working on you and you are learning all these skills right? Maybe you're in one of our client programs and learning um, skills that are specified for women to help you in your industry, learn more, sell more, and you're working on your mindset and you're doing all this learning and you're not taking action. How are you going to sell? <laughs> you have to do all three. You can't have one without the other. And again, as a woman, it's really important that you understand this because taking advice from a guy that's just like, Hey, just get out there and let's make it happen. Or, Hey, we just need to you need to stand there in uncomfortability a little bit longer and push them forward in the sale. Like it's going to feel awkward for you. So just take a minute back and be like, how can I organize my time, my day, my energy to be the best woman that I possibly can be for my prospect, for my client or for your family or whoever you're doing this for suffering. When you're frustrated and you're annoyed and you're upset, Suffering is meaning that you are thinking about yourself and how it's not working out the way that you want it to, your expectations of how you think your life should look like. And if you choose to continue to suffer and always think about like where you are not at versus appreciating where you've come from and who you are right now, you're never, ever, ever going to be happy. And typically the way you do one thing in your life is the way that you do everything in your life. So if you're having issues at work right now, issues in business right now, issues in sales right now, maybe you also have issues in your love life or your uh, relationship with your kids or relationship with yourself or your friends. Just take a minute back and just take a look because we cannot move forward and really become the woman that we want to be this year unless we realize the things that are not working for ourselves. And I'm not perfect. Like, I'm not perfect. And there's so many things that I have, you know, learned over the years and not done the best with, you know, New Year's for me, it's, it's really hard for me to celebrate, you know, because I remember so many times being um, like partying and being like out of my mind coming the new year and not being able to see straight. And I just, I just remember just like completely wasting my life away because I was trying to escape because I hated the decisions that I had made or who I had become. And I'm just, you know, trying to be real and honest and authentic with you and show you that literally we are the only humans, we are the only species humans are that can change your life. You can live your one way of life six years and turn around and live it a different way for the next six years. And we're the only species that have the ability to do that. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I absolutely believe it's my responsibility to be a mirror for you, to show you who you can become and allow myself to light a little flame in your heart, a spark in your heart for you to realize how incredible you are, that there's a gift placed inside of you, that your life has purpose, that there's a reason why you went through everything that you've gone through so far. There's a reason why. And typically the people that have gone through the most shit, the hardest stuff are typically the ones that live an extraordinary life and can change and make huge changes in the world. If you allow yourself to realize that's your story and you realize you can make your mess into your message. This year, it gets to be about you, about you increasing your ability to make more money so that you can make a larger difference in this world, 
ability for you to increase the love that you have for yourself so you can stand so powerfully in your essence and we can literally change the way women perceive themselves in this world. There's so many women out there that are not as lucky as you. There's women out there that used to be like me that their husbands beat the crap out of them and tell them every single day how worthless they are and how they're never going to amount to anything. There's women that one in three women have gone through some type of assault and, you know, things that are absolutely, you know, I, I can't even bring myself to think about it. Just horrific that women go through women being sold right now. Like there's horrible things and, and then guys too, there's horrible things going on with them too. But I'm just putting the focus on us ladies, because if we don't stand up and transform ourselves, how are we going to stand for the women in this world that need us? This year gets to be about you. And as you're working on yourself, as you're allowing yourself to obtain higher skills, um, you can absolutely be in a position to make a huge difference if, if you want to. So if you're listening to this right now and you are not in our group for women, it's called Women in Sales on Facebook. Please join that group. We have trainings in there every week. We just want to support you, love you, honor you, um, and show up for you. Because as women, if we don't stand together, how the hell are we going to make a bigger difference? So I honor you. I love you. I hope that you have an incredible new year. I cannot wait to see the woman that you become. And I will see you on the next episode.